Dining can be a very personal experience, and you probably know one or two people who eat some pretty bizarre foods or odd combinations that you think could never surely go. But those are nothing compared to what was eaten in ancient times. Let's take our palates on a taste adventure and sample some of the most bizarre foods from long ago. Flamingo Flambe Poor flamingos had it rough in Roman times, when they were considered a representation of the wealth of the owner. Not only were they kept as little lawn pond dressing, but the Romans preferred a rather strange part of their anatomy as a treat. Nothing was quite as delicious and sought after at the Roman table as flamingo tongue. This luxury was a must-have amongst the Roman upper class. The delicacy was not only tasty, but considered such a luxury because of the expense of flamingos. To sacrifice the bird just to fry up its tongue was the ultimate sign of wealth. Thankfully, the rest of the bird didn't go to waste, as flamingo recipes were uncovered with instructions on how best to prepare the bird for the banquet table. Nuts about dormice the bigger the better is not always true. But in the case of dormice consumption in ancient Rome, none a truer word was said. The obsession to outline your wealth to guests was so intense that a scribe was employed just to record the weight of the dormice served at a feast. The reason is the extreme rearing of the dormice delicacy that was a direct link to one's wealth. Each dormouse was hand-reared in its own individual clay pot. There, in the darkness of an artificial burrow, it was fed with acorns and chestnuts to its heart's content. It was an immediate assumption that the longer the wealthy were able to dedicate the space, time, and nuts required to rear a dormouse, the more lavish their wealth was. Once they were chunky enough, they would be cooked and served, usually with honey and poppy seeds, stuffed with another meat, or roasted in a casserole. The ancient food bloggers of the time always made mention of the quality and the size of the dormouse served at such elite occasions. Irresistible onions Nowadays, most of us wouldn't dare consume onions on a first date for fear of bad breath. In ancient Egypt, it seems onions had the opposite effect. Onions were considered to have an aphrodisiac effect, so much so that celibate priests were banned from consuming them, lest they are tempted to err on their vows. Peacock for your thoughts Peacock was a popular meat in ancient Rome, often made into meatballs by the wealthy. While the peacock was exotic to Rome, it was kept fairly commonly among the rich, and because meat was not as easy to come by as today, the poor pet peacock was soon sent to the pot. Street Urchin Ancient Roman street food included some awesome seafood favorites, far more exotic than your average fish and chips. On the regular, the lower class could enjoy a tasty snail snack or slurp up an oyster and even order up some sea scorpion. But most surprising is that sea urchins were also on the street cart menu. The sea urchin was considered a delicacy of the wealthy in ancient Roman cuisine. But here it was, the highly praised seafood, available at the lowly street food vendor. The archaeological digs at Pompeii unveiled a startling reality that all classes enjoyed slurping up a sea urchin, prepared in olive oil, sweet wine, and pepper by the corner street cart. Pies Alive We guess entertainment was limited in the 15th and 16th century, so it became a custom to entertain oneself by combining the menu with a sort of performance. No lowly dry ice effect was enough for a royal feast. Rather, an elaborate showpiece included baking a seven-year-old dwarf into a pie. When the pie was served during the feast in 1626, the tiny man, called Geoffrey Hudson, broke through the pie crust wearing a tiny suit of honor and hastily bowed to the queen. The guests were delighted, as was the host, Queen Henrietta Maria, who added him as a staple menu item from then on. A 16th-century Italian cookbook contains instructions for how to bake live birds into a pie. The theatrics created by live birds flying from a pie once cut open is undeniable. But there is no uncertainty that this is a recipe you'd want to get the cooking time just right. It is thought that this might have been the inspiration for the nursery rhyme, four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. Poison pancakes Originating from the 16th century, the English were taken by the Tunzi. This was a pancake that was popular during Lent when treats were limited and meals restricted. The Tunzi was made from a batter of vinegar, eggs and ground and crushed flowers. The flowers used were a combination of all or some of a bouquet of violets, feverfew, herbs like parsley, and the tansy flower. At the time, they were considered to have the medicinal benefit of relieving digestive pains. However, revelations by modern science in the early 20th century saw the tansy disappear from diets. It turns out, the pancake was poison, as the tansy flower produces alkaloids toxic to humans and animals. Water, water, everywhere. The Great Depression was a terrible time in American history. 
it was near impossible to feed your family, as food was scarcer than employment. Many songs from the time are a record of some of the regular meals cooked up during the Depression disaster. You might have heard of a few, but none are quite as depressing as Bulldog Gravy, a gravy made from water, flour, and grease served up on stale bread. The dish was called a water sandwich, and even this measly diet was not an everyday luxury. Many families were forced to revert to an every other day schedule of eating. Feline Delight Cat lovers might need to cover their ears. Let's make this quick and painless. In a book from the 16th century, Spain is a recipe for cooking a cat. It was prepared similar to a rabbit spit roast or combined into a soup. Interestingly, it was not recommended to eat the brains of a cat because it was likely to cause you to lose your senses and judgment. I'm sure that cat lovers are all under the same opinion that the loss of senses and judgment certainly comes long before you are eating a cat. Hungry for Hippos Ancient Egyptians considered the hippo a great dinner. Hunting down a hippo must have been quite a feat. Hippos are one of the most dangerous creatures on earth, and the manpower required to not only take down a hippo, but also prepare it for the pot must have been an incredible challenge. Although, who better to tackle a hippo into a pot than the nation that built the Great Pyramids? A side of giraffe Giraffes were considered helpless and peaceful in nature by Roman society and many disapproved when ruthless emperors would use them for fighting during the games. More recently, it seems the giraffe was used for other purposes than as a pet or for entertainment. Archaeologists uncovered a restaurant in Pompeii where giraffe leg was being served before the volcanic eruption froze the meal in time. It is not known whether this was a regular occurrence. However, there is no denying that on this fateful day, giraffe was on the menu. Suspended in time Perhaps the thought of prawns or pimentos floating in a savory jello doesn't do it for you. But in the 1950s and 60s, the jello salad was coming in thick and fast at every potluck and party you went to. While not exactly an ancient food, we are glad that the craze of setting vegetables, meat, and mayo into a mold is ancient history. Whale waste. One man's trash is another man's treasure, could not be truer when it comes to ambergris. Ambergris is whale upchuck. Well, that's in a good scenario. In the worst scenario, it exits through the other end. It is the delightful product of whale indigestion, when a whale gets a squid beak stuck in its system and fatty fluids builds up around the mass. Eventually, the congealed mass is ejected by way of the whale's front or back door, and then it bobs around the ocean until it is picked up as the ultimate ancient delicacy. In ancient Persia and India, it was a delicacy in cookbooks and an integral part of medieval Arab culture. It then proved a hit in Italy and France before becoming popular in England. It was added to candies, pastries and puddings. Nothing was spared. Whipped cream to cheesecakes, even alcoholic drinks got the ambergris flavor. In the 17th century, it was even added to ice cream. So what does this whale waste taste like? It was described as earthy or mossy and even musky. So, is that one helping or two for you? Candle Cake During World War II, Britain's resources were diverted to the war effort, which meant civilians at home in the UK were left with very little to feed their families with. Rationing forces cooks to be extremely resourceful when it comes to cooking, and some of the substitutions they resorted to were frightening. Cooking fat was in particularly high demand, so home cooks used paraffin wax as an alternative. The British Ministry of Food had to step in and explain that the use of wax or liquid paraffin was a danger to health, given its laxative effects. They were forced to label the product for medicinal use only. However, it didn't stop recipes calling for the melted wax or a few tablespoons of paraffin becoming popular. A favorite recipe was paraffin cake, a mixture of sugar, flour, baking powder, dried egg, lemon essence, a splash of milk, and a few tablespoons of paraffin. Delish! If you were forced to sample one of these ancient foods, which would it be and why? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. 1. Mummy Knows Best Forget bone broth for longevity. How about eating the ground-up bones of the dead to rejuvenate yourself? Well, in the 17th century, European doctors prescribed ground-up mummies that they had excavated in Egypt. They believed that the ancient corpses contained the ability to cure almost anything and that consuming them was to absorb the spirit of the dead person's soul. This would revive the patient of their affliction if mixed in with chocolate and eaten. 
Of course, these cures did not come cheap, and the European doctors made sure their mummy method of healing fetched a high price. Whether it worked or not, mum's the word. Oh, <laughs>